So, Dr. Dua, <laughs> yes, sir. you have been here a year. Yes. Mm -hmm. And and just helping people understand and process this. Absolutely, yeah. Mm -hmm. So, what what do you take away are the big learnings from not only just George Floyd, so mm -hmm. the whole experience, racism, intolerance. How, I think for me, I, I will try to put things in context for, for your audience and for yourself, as I mm -hmm. mentioned earlier. I came here because my son, a year ago when we all came here, my wife and I, uh, he, he had a serious reaction to this, yeah. you know, montage. Um, and he asked, asked three questions. The first one was, you know, why are they killing us? Uh, the second question was, what did we do wrong? And the third one was that, you know, what can we do to prevent it? Mm -hmm. uh, so as a result of that, um, he decided to go to therapy. And a uh, month later, he came back and said, Dad, it's working for me. And I think I have an answer to the third question that I asked you. And I want all my friends to have access to mental therapies. So that's the, the genesis of why I've been sitting here, to make myself available to the community and whoever wanted to talk and uh, eventually guide them to the therapy that we work with. Um, so. That's 846S. 846S. Yeah. What's, so 846S, what, what does it stand for? It, it stood for the eight minute 46 seconds that the police officer right. was on George Floyd's neck. Yeah. But now we know after the trial exactly. that it was more than it's that. It's more than that. Yeah. <laughs> so that's what I say it stood mm. for. Okay. But the youth wanted to have 846 as a point of reference. Okay. And so, so the organization was creating around um, making mental health um, part of the conversation. It's purely, you know, youth led. They have a, mm -hmm. a podcast uh, yeah. to called To Keep It A Buck. And they go to the street and ask their friend, you know, question about themselves. How do you take mm -hmm. care of yourself? Do you need any help? And so it's, it's about, you know, breaking down those stigma around mental health. So. I don't focus too much into politics. Good. And I'm more, I stay in my lane, which is yep. to normalize conversation around mental health okay. and getting the community to have access to it. And that's where I'm here. So tell me about the space, what, for you? Like, the, 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 the space for me has become more of a sanctuary. Mm -hmm. When I come here, I can easily spend, you know, eight hours without knowing it, whether I talk to someone or whether I'm alone, mm. uh, it doesn't matter. What matters is that I'm here and whoever wants to talk to me, I'm open. And, and, and down the line, you know, you make the reference to Ghana, right? Uh, growing up in, in the Ivory Coast, you know, West Africa, there was always someone present in the community under a tree. And there was always an elder. So, you know, I didn't, you know, mean to turn myself into being under a tree. So you're the elder it, under the tree. It became like an urban baobab tree yeah. where mm -hmm. I sit under the tree and everybody knows where I am mm -hmm. and where to find me. Beautiful. And so this is difficult, but when people come to me, I ask them three questions. The first one is what makes you happy? And most of the time they cannot answer that question because the backdrop is so drastic, mm -hmm. it's so painful. And I say, yes, George is gone, all those people are gone, but they want us to leave. They want you to have a life, but you don't have an answer, that's all right. The second question was, when was the last time you were happy? What were you doing? And the last question is, how can we work with you to co-create or you know, organize ourselves so that you're back to your, a space of jubilation? So these are the three things that I guide the conversation here. But I don't advertise, I don't wear any t-shirt. Well, um, I want to have this natural human interaction. Because if I wear a t-shirt, then you will have your antenna thinking, oh, this guy's into mental health. Uh, I'd rather have it, you know, cool, grassroots. Great. Uh, so the community come talk to me, I talk to them. And, you know, I spend the whole day here. I've been here since 10 o'clock. And I'm going to be here until six. Okay. You know, sometime longer. Right. Uh, and it's going to get cold in a couple months too. I, I was here, you know, last winter. winter. Mm -hmm. I was still here. Mm -hmm. I had my, you know, winter gear, and I was still sitting yeah. here. So bless you. Uh, All right. You know. So indeed, it's been a, it's been a long journey, and it's only now that think about it. Basically, last year, everybody was in the thick of things. Yes. They were fighting the police. They were yeah. fighting this. It was a way to hide themselves behind their mm. own emotional problem. Mm -hmm. 
now the trial is over, I'm seeing more and more people because there's no constant enemy. So there's a processing taking place. They, now they're realizing Collected that, what do I do for myself? Mm -hmm. You know, how do I organize myself to get back on track? Okay. And that's when, you know, we need more people out here to help out for right. us. Because it's, it's them now and their mirror. Yeah. It's no longer, you know, in Derek Chauvin. It's no longer anybody else. Right. It's um, about us. It's about you. Yeah. What can we do with you? Right. So, well, thank I'm, you. I'm just a servant. I'm so glad you stopped by. And thank you very much. You know, I, I I'd like to know if I can put up three questions to help people out yeah. and drive them to 846s. Absolutely. Thank do what you want. I'm just a servant. So. Okay. Go ahead. <laughs> thank you. Thanks so much. Blessings. Indeed. <laughs>